My guest today is a renowned TV host. He first began his career on Big Brother in Nigeria and is now the host of Big Brother in Nigeria. When he's not on TV, killing it with the interview questions, he's on social media, slaying it with his amazing fashion looks. He really has become a fashion icon. I'm talking about none other than Ibuka Obi Ochindu. Hi, Ibuka. I think my job here is done. <laughs> How are you? Now. <laughs> I'm very well. How are you doing? You look fashionable. <laughs> thank you very much. You look amazing. Congrats on this. Oh, well, thank you. Thank very you. Well it's, I mean, it just feels appropriate. <laughs> well, that means a lot. Who else? For me. That means a lot for me. <laughs> for you. We're here to talk about you. Big Brother Nigeria. Yes. I remember watching it when you were on. Oh, really? And all I remember just saying to, my, ago. saying to myself was, ah, that guy's fine. Oh. <laughs> and that was the, you know, Ibukadi fine boy. But why did you even enter the house? Because you were a lawyer. Yes. A lot of people keep still asking me that to, to the date. And it's been over a decade. And two weird reasons. One, I was bored. Okay. I was practicing law. I just finished law school. I studied law because I didn't really know math. I had no, that was the real reason why mm -hmm. I went to study law, not because I really wanted to be a lawyer. So I started this profession. It wasn't necessarily exciting me. Um, and I had watched the show before. I'm like, okay, this might be interesting, but I never thought I was going to do it. Mm. But then my sister had seen the advert in the, in the newspaper at the time, and we started talking about it, and she started laughing and dared me. Like, I beg, you know, if you do, I'm like, who does she? You know, because I was, I was a painfully shy person. Okay. There was no way I would ever have thought of doing something like that. So I actually applied on the internet in her house mm. just to show her that I could. And then they called me up, and I was like, okay. <laughs> Let's see how far this goes. And yeah. I went for the next stage of auditions and I saw some really hot babes. <laughs> I think that was when I was like, hmm, this might not be a bad idea, yeah. you know? Yeah. And then I went to the next stage and the next stage and I got picked. So it was, it was actually what you can call rough play, mm. pretty much. Mm. Just let's see how far this goes. And it mm. actually then happened. And I thought like, you know what, let's, why, why turn back at this stage? Mm -hmm. $100,000 looked like it was, it was very good money. I mean, till today, it's still a lot it of money. Is. So the plan was go into the house, win the money, go to America and do your master's and okay. continue your life there. I had no plans whatsoever to be doing what I'm doing. To enter entertainment? Nope. Nothing. Nothing at all. Yeah. Big Brother was always a dream. And nobody who has ever been on the show had ever hosted. Yeah. Like, okay, maybe this would be a nice way to sort of segue into okay. back into this show that I was on. So when the opportunity came up, I mean, I'd always been eyeing IK. I was like, guy. Because <laughs> yeah. you know? I feel that's Big Brother Africa. Africa, yeah. right? but he was doing such an amazing job. Yes. Like, you know what, let's just leave this guy and yeah. face our work. Yeah. Then Big Brother Nigeria came back. Did you indicate interest in the I had role? always indicated okay. interest. You know, whenever I was Bumped at an audition to, yeah. or whenever yeah. I hung out with anybody, I'm, also, I'm like, you know what, if this ever happens, yeah, I would like to have a shot at it. Mm -hmm. You know, so when it happened, I got a call, I did a closed audition. And, and I got the job. So as much as it wasn't necessarily in line with my politics or current affairs sort of, or you, like you said, mm. journalistic outlook. Mm. I mean, it's Big Brother. It's a massive show. Yeah. What well, was talk to me about the pressure of the very first show? Because like you said, I think it's a really good yeah. host. Yeah. You know that? It's <laughs> yeah, a few people that you don't want to stand next yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. What was that pressure like? And how did you, in your craft, how do you get to a place where you're like, I'm going to do this on my own terms? Yeah. I tell everybody, with what IK had done and how long he had hosted the show, but he had done about six or seven seasons. That's unbelievable for anything. And he did every single season amazingly, yeah. right? And I said, even if Ryan Seacrest was going to come and host that mm. show, there was going to be a beg with IK, yeah. whether you like it, no matter how much of a good job you did. I mean, it happened to IK even when he got on the show. Mm. There was a guy called Cabello who was yes. hosting before he yes. came on. And there was all of this, I beg, who is this one with his long neck? You know, they, And it was the same thing they bashed me <laughs> for, like, I beg, come on, see your head. You know, yeah. I got all of the bashing, mm -hmm. but I expected it. Okay. But what I said when going into Big Brother as a host was I needed things that were going to make me stand out. The worst thing you can do, I mean, you know as that presenter, the worst thing you can do is try to be somebody of else. Course. We all love Oprah, but you can't be Oprah. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know, what am I going to do to distract these people from? Yeah. Let's bring the buffs. <laughs> the buffs was a strategy. I'm like, I'm really? going to dress. So actually oh, yes. calculated I said, I'm going buffs. to, I had several meetings with designers. I said, you know what? Every look must be something to talk about because okay. Even if I'm terrible at what I'm doing, let there be something else that takes them away from how terrible I am. Okay. So that was a strategy. And then secondly, I decided to bring in more Nigerianness into mm -hmm. the show. Mm -hmm. So Ike was doing Africa, which is different. So yeah. his dressing couldn't be Nigerian because yeah. it wasn't a Nigerian show. So it was the first time you were seeing people wearing like traditional outfits on mm -hmm. stage. I brought Agbadas on stage mm -hmm. and I would tell pidgin English proverbs, which mm -hmm. people found unbelievably exciting. Like, I book, what one are you dropping next to? <laughs> yeah. And then I decided to make my interaction with the housemates from the stage more interactive. Okay. So 
while people waited for the housemates to come out and have their interviews, the one or two banter I would have with the housemates mm -hmm. from the stage about what happened last week, mm -hmm. people look forward to it. They'd be like, please ask them this, this yeah, week. Yeah. Them this week. You were like the link between yes. the outsiders. So it was also something I intentionally decided to be. Yeah. You know, let us let me be this person. I mean, the favorite thing I love to do on TV is interview people. Yeah. So why not bring that skill to the stage and let it shine? So those were all strategies. And by the second or third episode, I think people were people just like, had, you know what? You won us yeah. over because of you were yourself, yeah. definitely. And... You're right, the fashion thing. <laughs> I'm going to come back to the fashion strategy, but I want to talk a little bit about what's, what's your relationship like with the housemates now? Like after, you know, seeing them, you saw yeah. them start from the jump where they were not famous. And now yeah. there's like a lot of their careers have exploded. Yeah. Let's specifically one person last seen that was very controversial, yeah. Cece. Yeah. You know, um, what's your relationship like with her? Because I know you guys had a lot of issues or yeah. she had issues on her part or yeah. the Public made there be issues. What's you guys' relationship like now? I like that you said Bob because <laughs> it was quite, it was quite interesting. And literally the week the show starts, they're like, "Oh, this girl looks like Ibuka's wife." That was how it started. Yeah. And from her looking like Ibuka's wife, the theory now became you this is Ibuka's wife's sister. Sis wife's sister. It wasn't now like it looks like. It, it just became a thing. This is his wife's sister, and Ibuka puts his sister in law in the house. My wife's name is Cynthia. Yeah. Her name is Cynthia. I don't know how many parents <laughs> around the world name their kids Cynthia, the Cynthia. same name. Yeah. So that was just ridiculous. But I laughed it off, you know. I didn't really take it too serious. Because, I mean, the sister thing didn't work. And they said, I Ibuka and this girl dated. I get trolled a lot, but mm. I never bothered with it. It started affecting my wife. Mm. Because people would go to her DMs mm. and tell her, look, as you're marrying an Ashao, your husband took his girlfriend to the show. You're shameless. You're marrying a man who sleeps around with girls and puts them on Big Brother. You know, so I'm like, leave her alone. Deal with me yeah. if you must lie. Yeah. Like she has nothing to do with this. How, how show. do you deal with that? Like she's, well, yeah. she's married yeah. to, and Cynthia is a very private person. Extremely private. You know, I dragged her leg outside. <laughs> As it, you know, Ibuka, you're a really good looking guy. <laughs> so there's that that pressure of yeah. feeling like, man, people are hitting on my husband. Yeah. How do you guys deal with that? Trust was a very important part for me. Okay. So what happened was most times when I get some of these DMs, I screen grab and send to her, okay. or we're in bed and I open eyes. I come and see the one they've said now. Mm. This one is sending me her breasts. Mm. You know things like that. I wish I share it. Send you oh, yeah. their breasts. And I will just look at it and we laugh. She look at the person. Like, look at this idiot. Wow. So I share those things yeah. with her to make her understand. You know what? There's really nothing to be scared of. Yeah. So has she ever done a clap back before? Oh yeah, a few times. <laughs> <laughs> a few times. The Twitter account she has now is not the Twitter account she had when we got married. <laughs> Something went around and she not deleted the pages. Like, I can't continue. <laughs> so she started afresh and she has locked her account. So she's, she's a private account. So she's just like, you know what? A lot of, I can't continue like this. You know, we had a conversation <laughs> one about getting married and you said you knew. You knew that she was the one that she, how did you, how did you guys meet and how did you decide that, you know, this is the person I want to spend the rest of my life with? A cousin of mine, Larry Gaga, who we all know, he's an artist. Yeah. yeah. He's very good friends with Cynthia's elder, elder brother, who I went to university with, by the way. Okay. I think I asked for her Instagram, her Twitter account at the time. Okay. This was in 20, 2009. Okay. I got her Twitter account and I followed her. Mm. And she followed back almost immediately. Okay. And, I asked, oh, yeah, you <laughs> <laughs> and then I sent a DM. Okay. You know, we chatted a bit at the time and then we found out she was in a relationship at the time. I was in a bit of a brick at okay. the time. But we're talking back and forth. And then at the end of 2010, I had come back in between my, my um, master's for, for Larry's wedding, mm. Larry Gaga's mm -hmm. traditional wedding, and we met. But at the time now, we were both in serious relationships. Yeah. So we just had a conversation and everybody moved on and we didn't really, you know, take anything seriously. And once in a while, we'll tweet at each other, mm. what's up, or someone will tweet at this person, we have the other person. It yeah. wasn't anything deep. But I think I always knew somewhere like, this is not a bad girl to be with. Okay. The two things I would say that always sort of drew me to people or to female to women um and it's very i don't know mushy or it's kindness okay um and cynthia is extremely kind mm. i said she's actually the kindest person i've ever met and it's it shows in everything she does you know she's she was not that she's she's not going to put everybody before herself but she's someone who just understands empathy you know she's she's a very nice person mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i i noticed that almost off the bat i'm just like this is a very very kind and nice person yeah you know, who just her emotions were almost always out there mm. you know i like that a lot. i'm honesty mm. so two of those things were great for me and i like i, I like it i like someone who can hold a great, great conversation mm -hmm. um interestingly she's qu quieter than i am okay and i'm not a talkative yeah but when we are together 
You guys are oh just... my days. <laughs> well, Every one thing I know is that you are a... I know ah, that. Jesus is love. There's nothing we don't talk about. <laughs> we wait for each other in the evening and say, have you seen this one? Then we gossip everybody. <laughs> so it's, it's our uniting. Yeah, yeah. So we talk a lot. And I mean, it's, it's amazing because you guys have a baby on the way. Yes. And number two. Number two. God. Daddy, oh. <laughs> you know, I saw you put out... I was ready, uh, but I wasn't ready. I saw you put out a really interesting tweet where you were talking about how your first baby, she's already having conversations yeah. with you. Oh, it's, the, it's the most amazing thing. Like, Joel is beyond... Like, what is about how, how kids change you? You know, you hear that a lot, and it just sounds very cliche, but honestly, she, she has in so many ways. I was really watching her. I mean, I was there when she was born, so mm. I've been there all her life, yeah. literally. And I, this evolution just keeps happening, and every day there's a new word or a new phrase yeah. or something exciting she's learned she mm. wants to share. And she's more talkative than me and my wife. So okay. it's like, okay, who are you? <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah. I mean, I know my mom is quite talkative. So maybe yeah. she went all the way there to get it. So she always wants to talk about something or show you something or mm -hmm. express herself. She's, ext she's not shy. Yeah. She's very extroverted. She's one of the very few kids I know who spend more time outdoors than indoors. Mm -hmm. She cares for TV, but she doesn't really care. She wants yeah. to be outside and play and run around. And she's, you know, she's that girl. So every time I started dropping her at school now alone, because okay. she's now a little more independent. She doesn't need a nanny or somewhere beside. Yeah. And I put her in her seat, and she's, half the time she's blabbing, I don't know what she's saying, <laughs> but she's saying something. And it's just very, it has connected us so much more. Mm -hmm. You know, and I look forward to now dropping her at school anymore. Before it was yeah. just like, oh, please go and drop her. <laughs> but now I actually want to do it, because yeah. it's nice, and she looks forward to it. And we pick up from where we stopped the day before. Mm -hmm about whatever it was we're talking yeah. about, you know. And I mean, it's interesting because you're mentioning dropping her yeah. off in school. <laughs> and I know that there's this constant narrative of father's roles in their daughter's lives. Do you think a lot of your other peers, specifically like amongst your friends, understand the gender roles and the fact like, like and I'm using my mainstream is because the fact that you pick up your daughter, like as yeah. simple as it seems, it is some, People I know think some it's men why you're doing that, yeah. literally would never do that. Yeah. They would say, go and send the driver, send the nanny. Yeah. Do you think men amongst your social economics group and also your education level also feel comfortable doing, doing things like that? I don't know that everybody does, but in my circle, everybody I know is yeah. that way. And um, maybe they say you drift <laughs> along yeah. with people who, who are like-minded. And I know people who even in my circle back in the day were not necessarily that way, wired that way, but have become that way because maybe because they've seen people around them become that way and you know haven't had the had a choice. And I think that's what it is eventually. You know, the more something becomes normal, yeah. the less prejudiced it is, mm -hmm. and that's just the way life is. And it's interesting because you definitely sound like a man who has a daughter. That, you know, I think the perspectives are different. Yeah. You know, when you realize you're like, yo, someone can say all this gender nonsense yeah. to my child. You know, the funny thing, I've always been that way. My only sister is eight years older than me. Yeah. So she's my senior by far. Like, we're not mates in any way. Mm. And I remember a particular occasion where her boyfriend would come to see her. I think I was about 12 at the time. And he pressed the bell and I opened the door. And he was like, yeah, I'm here to see if you're She's not around. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I'm like, why are you here to see my yeah. sister? You know, so I've always been that guy who was, you know, that way with mm. family or with people. So it was, I don't know that anything has really changed because I had a daughter. It's, it's the way I've always thought. But at the same time, of course, now I'm a little more interested in how she evolves, how she mm. becomes, you know, a human being. And yeah. I, I know that fathers will play an important role of course. in that. And I'm, very, I, I very don't very want to be that guy who did it. When you wear something, it trends. And then not only that, when you wear something, you help designers. Yeah. People say I should be collecting money because people are buying That's cars on top of my head. You, do you charge people? <laughs> Actually, I don't. Okay. My wife says it's my CSR to the world. <laughs> 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 that I should help them blow is fine. I mean, yeah. it's... And these are people who do great work. And we live in a country, how much you want to collect, to be yeah, honest? Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 there's only so much you can take from them. I mean, a lot of them give me free clothes. It's fine. Um, let me sound very, I mean, it's nice to see them do well after yeah, I help. Of course. <laughs> but to be honest, um, what do I look out for? So I always go, what was the theme of the event? So what am I trying to do? What okay. am I trying to say? I, I always want to stand out. So I at least spend some time on Instagram. Mm. So there are a couple of people who I always bookmark. Okay. There are people who are my bookmarks constantly. I'm like, okay, this is an interesting designer. Mm. And it would be nice to work with him if so so and so thing comes up. Mm. With Yagbada, for example, with Bank Yagbada, I had seen Yagbada, I think, I think in June or July of the year. I didn't know what I was going to wear. I was like, oh, this is interesting. And I bookmarked it. I completely forgot about it. Then Fashion Week happened about two months or so before the wedding. Yeah. And then I remembered, I was like, oh. And by then, we now had a group, a WhatsApp group of the groomsmen mm -hmm. for the wedding, mm -hmm. and we're all throwing banter like, about how we're going to address each other. And I oh. remembered, okay, I need to come with this and kill the day. Yeah. So it wasn't like I had a grand plan initially. It just 
everything fell in place somehow. Yeah. Same thing with the green Agbada, the Michael Black, I think is his name, who yes, tweeted Michael that he Black, bought yeah. a car for his wife yes, about a month yeah. after I wore his outfit. Same thing, I just, I had the picture saved. He had been DMing me actually about mm. wanting to clothe me and I just never really saw the need because mm -hmm. I never had anywhere I was going to wear. For about a year, the last wedding was coming up. I like, okay. Yeah. This might not be a bad, I mean, it's my friend. He's the one person that can wear anything I want to, <laughs> and she will not be angry. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Do you sometimes feel, I mean, for example, like the idea of Ibukain, it, Skinny Girl Enchanted, they specifically used it. It's a term, like, don't come and Ibukain to my wedding. <laughs> Do you sometimes feel like people sincerely are being serious about you not coming to outshine them? I think so. And <laughs> I, saw that, I saw that episode, actually. I'm a huge fan of Skinny Girl Enchanted, first of all. Um, and people tweeted at me before I saw it, like, ah, Ibukain, you used your. <laughs> I was like, okay. That's nice. I've entered serious pop culture. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, think, I think some people are serious. I think some people, um, with Banky, for example, now, I feel like if it was someone else, the person would have been upset. Yeah. But he's my friend. Yeah. And it's something we, he would probably also do if he was mm. my... I mean, he's one of my best friends. He doesn't have a choice. Yeah. I mean, we, we're all in the same group bragging about how we're going to come and kill it at your wedding. Mm. We're not going to come there looking shabby. Yeah. I'm not going to wear that to a random if I'm like a random cousin or a random friend just because I want to make a statement. All of these things have happened because I was just a booker mm -hmm. and I was just being myself and I was trying to be the best that I could be in everything I was doing. And people have seen that. Mm -hmm. It's been 13 years. Yeah. There are people who see exactly. me and they're like, there are people, people see me and like, ah, Ibuka, you just got big brother and ah, wow, it's okay. And I let someone else host it. Ah, you just, I'm like, but I've been doing this. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've hosted television for 13 years. Mm -hmm across board. I've done game shows, I've done fashion shows, I've done entertainment, mm. I've done interviews, I've done sports. Mm. The only thing I've not done on TV actually is read the news. That's literally all yeah, I've not done. Yeah. Be a broadcast, like be, read, be a mm. newscaster. You know, so I mean, I've, I've, I've come this far not because I was lucky or because, but I've worked to be the best at what I, what I do yeah. or be the best me. And I think maybe things are not falling in place and it's starting to look like, oh, wow, mm. is, are you the only one around? Or mm. are you the, what are you doing differently? So I think the lesson is just consistency and be true to yourself, honestly. You can't be anybody else. Yeah. Really quick before we go, I want to find out if you could host any TV show, what would it be? Two. Okay, two. You have two. One, The Weakest Link. Oh. I love The Weakest Link. Can I hear you? You are The Weakest Link. <laughs> Let me hear. I feel like I will say it in PG <laughs> <laughs> or in Igbo, but you are the weakest link. Oh. <laughs> I love the weakest link because I like to also play along. And what I love about the show, interestingly, is the fact that the prize money is so small. <laughs> you go through all, all that, and it's like one thousand pounds. I ah, know, I know. Where <laughs> the guy who went to home was a millionaire, yeah. probably spent less time and you know made more mm. money. So I like that, and it's very tasking intellectually. So I like the weakest link. But I also would like to do a Larry King style show internationally. Oh, nice. um, I feel like we haven't had that sort of representation from this continent where you're on a platform where the world is seeing a Nigerian, you know, be Nigerian mm -hmm. on a global stage. Mm -hmm. Yes, we've had a few Nigerian or semi-Nigerian newscasters or broadcasters on these platforms doing great things, but there's been no talk show person who's mm -hmm. brought his Niger or her Nigerianness to the global stage to actually show how good we are. That's true. And what we do. And I mean, why can't you wear an Agbada on CNN? Yeah. Or on yeah. Al Jazeera? You know, yeah. these are things that I think, I think the world is getting there. I mean, diversity is becoming a thing. People are starting yeah. to understand that, okay, not everybody has to be white male yeah. on TV. I have a yeah. game for us to play really quick. Yeah. Rapid fire. <laughs> um, so I'll say the, I'll say whatever I'm saying and then you, first thing that comes to your mind. Hey, good. So I'm, I'm having a slow day, so forgive no, me. No, it, and this is, no, this is just about <laughs> yourself and who you are. Okay, first one, food. Yam porridge. Okay, color. Black. <laughs> Outfit, native or English? English, interesting. Really? Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> well, who's some of your favorite English designers? Maya Tafo. Without a doubt, but Tom Ford. He's Tom amazing. Ford. As well. Aye, fresh, fresh, fresh. <laughs> Travel destination? Japan. Really? Yes. Have you been? No, but it's my favorite country in the world. That's so interesting. <laughs> okay, favorite Nigerian song? Ha, ah, that is hard. Can I have a dance? Oh, yes. I heard it so much growing up. I heard it so much growing up, and that's, Blackie was such an icon yeah, for me growing yeah. up, and of course, African Queen, because I'm Two Faces is my favorite artist yeah. in the world. Let's yeah. just put that out there. It's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Okay, favorite Nigerian show, and you can't say Rubber Minds or Big Brother. Damn it. <laughs> favorite Nigerian show, Skinny Girl in Transit, actually. Okay. I think it's the one show in recent time that I followed every season, so yeah. Okay. <laughs> Next one. Tidubu or Sibajo or Saraki? Yoshimbajo. Yeah? yeah? When he didn't come on your show, 
How did that make, what, what was that? What happened? What had happened was um, something happened along the line and some things didn't fall in place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, um, there was some government protocol that, were, that needed to be sorted out and he just couldn't then come on at the time. And because it's a live show, it was something that he could have done if it wasn't live at mm. some point in the day. Mm. But it had to be three o'clock on a Sunday, and that was immovable. So yeah, a lot of people say he didn't come because he was avoiding your questions. Mm. Mm. <laughs> we'll take that as a yes. <laughs> All right, Ibuka, describe your life in a hashtag. For the longest time, up until two years ago, my bio on Twitter was evolving. Ellipsis. It's a process. So evolving. Evolving. Yeah. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Okay, this was wonderful. Was I had a great time with you. <laughs> Thank you for being so open and honest. Thanks for having me. My guest today has been Ibuka, and this, of course, is The Juice. Make sure that you comment and subscribe, share, and let me know what you thought about today's show. I'm Bonali, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>